Hey, what's good y'all? Josh from Alec here and it's that time again. Got a new video today and it's a bit different. I've been making a lot of orchestral mock-ups for years and I really wanna show that to you guys and I've been using Reaper to do it. Now, a lot of you out there might be like, what, using Reaper to do your orchestral mock-ups? Maybe you're using Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools, FL Studio, Ableton, whatever. I'm using Reaper and I think it's a really great choice. So I'm gonna go into the DAW and I'm gonna show you how I set up my template and show you a bit of the tips and tricks that I use to stay organized. Anyways, I hope this helps you out. Please subscribe and leave a comment below on what you wanna see next. Let's go. Okay, so we're in the DAW and I know it looks kind of crazy, but let's just start with like how I use my instruments. This varies from composer to composer, template to template. And there's two ways that I like to route my MIDI information. Uh, the first is like the ideal way I feel. Um, for example, I use Infinite Brass as my main brass library. And in Infinite Brass, everything is one track per instrument within a section. So there's a trumpet one, trumpet two, trumpet three, horn one, horn two, horn three. Really easy. And all the articulations respond to basically how you play the library. Um, let me just like demonstrate real quick. So not even the best playing from me, but you can definitely see, you can get expression and you can switch articulations super easy just by changing your velocity, changing how you um, play, like note duration, stuff like that. And there's way more to get into with this library. I'm pretty new to it, but you can see there's even flutter, growl, vibrato, different mutes, all that stuff. But that's how I would ideally like to work with instruments. Um, so. I think like you can do that stuff with sample modeling and stuff, but that's one way that I'm working with um, instruments within my template. The next is a bit more complicated. I use Hollywood strings as my main string library, and I don't like key switch patches at all. So what I do is I have one track with one instance of play for all my first violins. And what I do is I create a new track in Reaper with the name of the articulation, and it has like no, no plugin on it. And I just send that MIDI information to the channel I need. So this says MIDI, all MIDI data on this track is going to first violin MIDI, and it's going to MIDI channel two. So if I check MIDI channel two, it's a legato patch within Hollywood strings. So that's how I handle um, instruments like that. And that's basically how most of the rest um, of the instruments within my template are working. I keep the articulations on separate tracks and sequence them how I need them. So that can have pros and cons. It's not as glamorous as like infinite brass might be, but I just love the sound of Hollywood strings. And I think it's a super flexible library. And that's how I work with it. Now, from there, we can talk a bit about how I'm organizing all this stuff. So I have it kind of from the top down, just like you would in a real orchestra. I have my whole orchestra going to a single bus, so an orchestra bus, and then say I have my woodwind section. So within that section, I have a whole bus for woodwinds, and then I have a bus for the flutes, and then I have a bus for the oboe, clarinet, so on and so forth. So I'm keeping all of my folders in that sort of hierarchy um, where it kind of just goes from the biggest section to the smallest subsection. That can be super helpful. It means I can mute the whole orchestra and isolate non-orchestral elements if I'm doing like a trailer cue or something that has super loud drums where I might need to side chain the whole orchestra or something. So definitely a good way to, to handle that um, and it also means that I can isolate solo instruments. Like, for example, I'll play you a little example, um, even though this stuff's not really finished, but you'll get the idea. 
So check this out. I have some solo instruments and I have them separate from the orchestra bus. So it means if I need to export some stems, I can do that easy. So check this out. Completely separate. So before my computer <laughs> gives up, um, you can kind of see what I mean. I keep a lot of those solo instruments in their own bus, really separate from that orchestra bus. Now, that leads me to probably what's like the first tip. Um, there's a cool setting in Reaper called uh, screen sets and layouts. And you can set track views and selection layouts and stuff. And what I mean is, say I want to work with woodwinds only. I have a little hotkey that opens my woodwind bus. And say I want to work with brass. Bam, it can do that too. And it changes that stuff for me. Or say like I'm super confused. I have so many tracks and I'm lost and I need to collapse everything. I have another one that collapses everything to the default besides my reverbs. So that's a super useful, super easy thing to set up. Just check that out. Screen sets and layouts. Another tool that I use is, let's see, it's Reaper's Toolbar Docker. I put some custom actions in here that can really be useful. I use F10 to pull it up, but you can see it in the view menu. So check this out. I have stuff like transpose this MIDI item down a semitone. Transpose it um, up a semitone, down an octave, up an octave. I also have decrease the velocity by 10, um, creating regions, things like that. So a lot of the stuff that I use a, a lot to um, edit MIDI, if I need to do it in bulk, I could select all of this stuff and transpose it down a semitone. I could select all my orchestra elements and change the key by transposing a bit. Uh, so definitely super useful. Again, that's the toolbar docker. And I'm also using screen set, screen set slash layout. So that's two things that I really think are super, super useful. Now, that being said, um, some other stuff I like to do is I do hide my mixer. Um, let me see. So <laughs> I don't, I don't want to work with all of this being in the way. So I also hide that. Um, so if you want to do that, you can. I kind of messed up my setup for that, but you get the idea. Now let's talk a little bit about reverb. So reverb is kind of complicated. I have a big hate relationship with reverb. There has been no love over the years of trying to get this stuff to sound right. But I'm using spaces too. Um, and I just use the, the SoCal um, brass preset. And I also use the um, Hollywood scoring stage preset. The reason for this is super specific. I use the scoring stage to mainly get my instruments like front to back right getting them further back in the stage without having a super long tail. Um, and I really EQ it and make sure it's not too huge. And then I use the hall basically as my tail. It, it gives that sense that it's actually in a hall and not just in a room or a stage. Um, and then I have like a super giant uh, preset for solo instruments on Valhalla Room. Other than that, I send things to my master bus and there's one more reverb on there. I have a ton of stuff disabled just from experimenting, but you can see there's another spaces preset. And this one is the full orchestra preset. So this one's pretty quiet. I just use that for the tail. Um, but mainly, I'm, I'm almost always worried about getting the brass sitting right. Once the brass is right, I feel like I can keep the strings pretty dry. Um, but that's how I'm basically routing my reverb. Maybe I'll do a whole like track breakdown so you can really see how that's working in the mix. But I keep my reverbs all in one bus. So if I need to mute them or EQ all of them at once, I can do that. Moving from there, let's talk about how I route this stuff out. I have this huge pre-master bus that holds basically everything. It, it should be everything. Yeah, it holds everything. And this is where I just do some like um, some extra stuff. Like I decrease the gain 
um, some EQ, some bass reinforcement, and a little saturation. This other stuff's disabled, um, but I basically do that, and you could turn off everything except the gain plugin, probably. And then I do have all my mastering stuff, just a metering, limiter, um, and some compression and reverb. Super simple. I'm trying not to keep it like really complicated in my setup. But now you can kind of see how that's going. Um, orchestral templates can be really huge. So I'm color coding everything and keeping it in folders like I mentioned. Anyways, that's it for now. I'm definitely going to be doing some tutorials on composition topics and mixing topics about this template. So stay tuned and keep an eye out and we'll be making some music together. Anyways, please subscribe and leave a comment below on what you want to see next. And I'll see you next time. Peace.